But anyway, this this uh this this is what we would do if we got to the next job to start vacuuming after we've dumped. We would climb in our little door here. This little door is handy. Throw sticks in here. You can get in here and uh take a leak <laughs> on the road if you have to. Uh little we'll handle right here. We'll handle it. So we laid it down when we were at the, gotta climb in here. It's not the biggest door. All right, so. Okay, so what we've got on the bottom here is a solid bar on the bottom with no, don't have anything that's gonna like stick down below i cut these off at an angle so that we don't scrape our trailer floor if i do it again i'd put it make this a round bar anyway and then get a welder and weld all this up and i think i, I think i showed you at the thing we just weld the chain a lot around the back but we have it coming from four from the four corners Slide this back, lean it up against the wall. Square it up a little bit better. Then you can climb it like a ladder right on out. Uh, you see that this chain is one continuous chain. And so I count the chain links and this one is the middle one. And then we D-ring it to the, uh, one of these dudes. And then this chain is one chain length, one chain. And then it counts to the middle chain link and there it is. So you can imagine when this, uh, when this pulls. Damn, that was loud. Those would all pull evenly. Those all pull evenly. And then this is buried down the middle of the trailer it's buried by a bunch of debris and it's very important that this chain is at the bottom of your pile if you come in after the fact and put the chain higher up whatever the chain is on top of it will not the pallet will not pull that out so we start by making sure that this hook is dead center right against the uh, gate so that when this uh, gate drops and this is just a wall of leaves we just need to scratch right here and we know that that's where the hook's going to be and then to make it easy to pull the slack out yes like this whatever right done deal that's like you get that like that get this standing up really need to if i could add one more thing and add some mesh or something to it to uh, stop leaves from floating behind because that uh that creates a, a little void back there where leaves kind of sit and those leaves don't get pulled out with the load and we have to like kick those out. I think you see, if you see the, the dump video, we have to kick all that out and shove it out. But if it didn't get behind there, we'd be in much, much cleaner shape where we dump would be a little faster actually. Anyway. Okay. So we just climb out and that's it. Close the door and vacuum. If you don't have enough leaf, usually that, that the, the pressure of that throwing it in here sends the leaves back to the front of the trailer believe it or not if they're dry if they're wet they go to the back and then your trailer gets pretty back heavy and then you have to watch out for fish tailing most time they kind of pile back up over here against this so the first vacuum job usually first vacuum job usually fills this up and holds it up if it does not then you got to check it again to make sure that it's still standing at the second job we should do that anyway we haven't had a pilot fall down on us for a couple years now two three years now this is still a work in progress too 
but we need the vacuum higher instead of sitting down low because this hose needs to come across and then hang straight down. Okay? Because the, if the hose is like down low and runs out sideways, like a lot of guys seem like they, they do it that way, well, the debris like bumps along and gets stuck along the bottom and it falls out and then the, and then the air can't suck it through. So all of that uh, resistance along the, uh, the tube inside wall is what slows it down. But picture the uh, inside of the tube going straight down. The air is just underneath whatever it is. All it does is lift it the whole way and it doesn't bump along any side walls at all. Nothing really slowing it down. Just, just air be underneath it lifts it up. And once it gets to, the, to right here, the turn, that turn is slightly downhill and it's, and it's on in. It's down and in. And then we get to shorten this discharge chute. This, this giant turn of a discharge chute, garbage. It, is, uh, it eats through that metal in about two months, maybe, if that. So this is like a Schedule 40. That thing is really heavy. That's probably like 60 pounds, that, that elbow right there. And then I welded, you'll see some metal welded to it. I just chopped some straightaway, some of that straightaway pipe off and welded it to this. And then I had to weld a little flange because this, this bolts down around it and bolts that down to the vacuum. You can see when we suck up wet leaves and water and it's nasty, it gets all nasty. But as soon as it rains, it'll clean it off. And this is four, this vacuum is four years, going on its fourth season with us. So the hose, I'm surprised it's still going, but it's going. We tape up some holes and stuff, but it still goes. Hell, we don't even have to uh, hook this down. We just kind of lay it in the truck bed here, and it rides fine. It just accordion kind of pushes and pulls as we turn and everything. Uh, that's about it. I mean, other than that, I mean, I'll go walk around this nice and slow. So you can see everything. This 2x4 here. On the other side, it's wrapped around the, the mesh tarp one time. And this, it's just wrapped, tucked down once. Just screw that in. And then those boards across the top hold it from push, hold the walls from pushing out so hard. Now look, I did this myself, it took a while, chop this open, this angle iron open, and kind of basically welded a stake pocket in here so that this 2x4 can go down and be flush up against this plywood, and the plywood can be flush up against this. If you start thinking about how to get the walls up inside there, you'll see what I'm talking about and how why I actually did that. It gets the plywood nice and close to the wall here, the mesh. Anyway, the gate that we use a strap because it takes this uh, these pins. There is so much pressure against this gate; it's not even funny. You can't hammer that pin out, so we don't even try in the in the winter. We just use this strap. It's not convenient. There's got to be a. I, I just I don't have time to come up with a better way right now, so we just use the strap. Uh, so we just have to undo it and drape it around. 